In the previous video, we developed a customized PyTorch dataset class by subclassing the PyTorch abstract dataset class and overriding the len and get item dunder functions. In this video, we create a data loader which makes it so easy to iterate over the dataset object, cut it in mini batches, and even shuffle it. Let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to ML Done. As promised, today we're gonna learn how to create a data loader. Why do you need it? Because many times if you want to train an artificial neural network, you need to be able to cut your data in mini batches, um, shuffle it, and retrieve samples from it as you iterate through it. Without a data loader, it would make it so much harder for you to, to do all of these things. You have to code everything from scratch. Data loader does all of that for you. Um, so let's just see how we can do it. First things first is that we need to import the data loader. It's simply one command. You just import it from toch.utils.data, right? Maybe I should define it here in a separate cell. How can you define it? Um, it's so easy, actually. I'm just gonna say data loader, and then the data loader that we have imported. All you need to pass to it is the dataset object, right? So this is the dataset object that we've created in the previous session. So this is the most basic form of creating a data loader. There are more things you can do to it. I'll show you in a minute, but for now, let's just stick with the simplest case. Okay, we ran successfully, that's great. Now let's create a for loop and iterate over this data loader. I'm gonna keep track of the indices of this items in the for loop and the actual samples that are being retrieved uh, from the data loader. So because I want to get the indices and the actual retrieved samples, I need to enumerate, put enumerate around the object over which I want to iterate, right? This is just a Python thing. So I put my data loader here, right? Um, and now the image, every time the iteration happens, this S, will be a dictionary, right? Remember, this get item is, uh, is being called automatically, right? And uh, right off the bat, when you create the data loader and you pass this, I, uh, this D object to it, it runs the len functionality, the len dunder function, so, so that it knows how many samples are there inside. So again, these magic functions are just being called um, implicitly behind the scene. So S is a dictionary, right? So if I want to get the image inside, all I need to do is to say, yeah, the value corresponding to images. And if I want to get the label, let's call it L, which is going to be the value corresponding to the key labels, right? So this guy over here. And those indices are passed to this get item function again under the hood. Now, before we go on, I just wanna just make sure that everything is in the right dimensionality. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna print the shape of image before I go about actually showing the image. In here, I forgot in, sorry about that. Okay, so it is, again, it is a, a torch tensor, right? And it's because you pass the data to data loader. That's what happens. It immediately turns all the NumPy arrays inside, um, all of these NumPy arrays into torch tensors. Um, so it is a torch tensor, but it has one dimensionality extra. We don't need that. Otherwise, I mean, you, you won't be able to actually um, use PLT Imsho to actually show the image. So you need to squeeze this tensor. What this does is it just gets rid of that extra dimension. Um, so let me just run this again one more time. Okay, good. Now it looks all right. Um, also, I'd like to look at L, just what it looks like. All right, so it is again a tensor. I don't want it to be a tensor. You can easily convert a tensor to a list. You don't have to, again, I'm just being pedantic here. And it's a two dimensional list. Again, I don't need that. I mean, we don't need two you know, square brackets. So I'm just gonna grab the element inside, which is gonna be only one list. Great. Okay, now we know what, what image and label look like. Now let's go about showing the images. 
Now, you need to call plt.show every time you use plt.show in a for loop. Otherwise, all the images will be stacked up on each other. That's not what you want. You want to see all the images uh, shown on top of each other separately, though. Um, I'd also like to put the label to be L, right? And one other thing, that's and that's why I'm going to use I here. That's why I use enumerate here. And it's because i is going to serve as a counter. So if i is bigger than 5, break out of the loop. Right? Good. And you notice that the images are really pixely. And it's because we have resized those images to 32 by 32 pixels. If you remember, that sort of distorts the quality. Um, good. Now, this was the most basic version of Data Loader, right? Now we want to be a little more fancy. Next thing is to add shuffle to the mix. So while defining the Data Loader, you can actually say, OK, I want to turn on shuffling. Shuffle is a binary um, flag as a parameter. By default, it's false. But now you can turn it on, right? So while defining your Data Loader, you add shuffling. Now. Notice, every time I'm going to iterate through the data loader object, we should see different images every time. So, okay, this is the first round, right? We have these images. So if I run this again, we should see different. Yes, we see different, right? So this is what shuffling does. It just changes everything. I presume if it's false, it should print the same things every time. OK, great. You see, every time I'm running it, it's turning the same thing. Great. Another aspect of data loader is you can actually cut your data set object D into mini batches of your desired size. And you use batch size, right? You can say, I don't know, 128, right? So let me just forget about you know, showing these images. I just want to show you the dimensionality of uh, the images and labels. Now, if I print the shape of image, let's say batch size is 128. OK, you see all of a sudden we have this extra dimension. So it means at every iteration, this image becomes 128 images inside your data set. And L becomes 128 multi-hot encoding vectors. And that is about adding mini batches. The last point that I'd like to make here is another flag that is that can be useful. Uh, it's, it's pretty advanced stuff, but it might be useful in your case. And it's called drop last. Um, you can put it true or false. I think by default it's false. Um, the reason you need this is because imagine that your data set um, has 10 data samples inside. And imagine that your batch size is 3. So after 3 iterations, it means 3 times 3, 9 data samples will have been retrieved. So only one sample is left in the data set. Um, but your batch size is 3. So if you want to retrieve that one sample, but you have a batch size of 3, it's not like PyTorch is going to look at it and say, OK, good, so we only have one data sample, so let me just assume that my batch size now is 1. What it does is it actually fills the remaining empty placeholders by some uh, ve weird values. I, I think they're just random. I mean, I've seen the values and they're just random. Um, so that is why the drop last literally gets rid of that last batch of data that is incomplete, not fully full by actual data samples. It drops it. And then you might ask, but I mean, listen, this is getting rid of the data because inside that final batch of data, we have legitimate data samples. So why just get rid of the entire thing? And um, I mean, you're right, it is getting rid of some data. But typically, when you use data loaders to train an artificial neural network, we have this concept called epoch. So if you want to go through the entire data set 5, 10, 20 times, that's your epoch number. Every epoch means that you go through the entire data set once, right? Because you do this epoch more than once, one, two, three, four, five times, um, the bit of legitimate data that was dropped in the last incomplete batch will be visited eventually. 
Because every time you're shuffling and you're going through the next epoch, those data points will get shuffled somewhere in the middle and they will be again visited by your artificial neural network. So your neural network will see everything. And I think that's it. I think that's the concept of data loader and now you know what, you know how it works. In the next video, we're gonna see how we can use data loaders to actually um, create a train and validation set, or let's say even test set, using the data loader and the data set object. And uh, we'll hopefully be able to then use that in the future to train our neural network and even test it to see how it does. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.